my name is Sean Young, um, and I'm going to present the Solon Solidity compiler. Um, so I have about 20 slides to go through, so I'll go through these fairly quickly. Um, so what is Solang? It's a um, it's Solidity compiler which compiles Solidity into uh, WebAssembly. It targets different blockchains, so currently targets Substrate, Ewasm, and, Saw and Sawtooth, and um, other ledgers, if they're interested, um, could add themselves. Um, now that the LLVM EVM backend is um, getting more, um, is stabilizing, that would be a very interesting target to add. Um, so Solang is written with different tooling than, uh, than Salt C. So it's, it's written in Rust. Um, in, when you write in a compiler, you have to deal with, with ASTs and control flow uh, graphs. And these are represented actually quite well in uh, Rust enums. So I think Rust is a quite suitable language. Um, it uses LLVM as a library. So it uses LLVM um, for its optimization passes and, um, and to write out the, uh, the, uh, the WASM file itself. Um, there are also some other advantages to using LLVM, which I'll talk about later. It, um, it has a Solidity grammar, and from that, um, it, the parser is generated. Um, so recently I've been adding uh, try catch and um, adding this to the parser, which is about 10 lines of code. So it's fairly straightforward with a generated grammar. So on different blockchains, um, the, there are some underlying sort of, uh, differences which might um, be visible in, in the language. So in, in Substrate, um, the address type is uh, 256 bits by default. It, they can actually be, it can actually be different from that uh, depending on um, how, how um, Substrate is compiled. Um, so the address type in Solidity is different. Also, um, Constructors can be overloaded in, in Substrate. Um, and um, Substrate uses um, different ABI encoding than, uh, than Ethereum. Uh, lastly, there's a print function, which is just useful for, for debugging. This is only available in uh, development chains, uh, but it does really help. So here's a tiny little example of a, um, um, a Solidity contract on, uh, on Substrate. So we have an overloaded uh, constructor. Um, the ABI encodes a function selector for the constructor. Um, the ABI encoding um, for int64 is simply eight bytes little endian. So all the types are fairly simply encoded. Um, so we have a function hello, which takes a string. Um, a string uh, simply has a, a single field with length followed by the bytes of the string in the ABI encoding. And then we have a, a, a print function call, which is a built-in, which um, calls the um, substrate uh, print. And um, here we also can do string concatenation. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So um, uh, a brief history of um, Solang. Um, is my screen very blurry? No, it is uh, crystal clear for me. OK, OK. It's really for me. Um, okay, so in uh, in March I wrote a prototype. Um, so this was um, a simple grammar for a very limited set of Solidity, um, some LLVM, and um, would, within a weekend of hacking I could get a very primitive um, contract to run. Um, so late in December, I um, I was awarded a grant from the Web3 Foundation, and this was specifically to um, complete, sling, complete Solidity language support for Substrate. This was divided into 10 milestones, and five of those have already completed. So um, these are the remaining milestones um, for the Web3 uh, grant. And this, in, um, in September, um, this will end. This, this should mean that the, this, um, Solang has feature uh, language support com complete. Um, doesn't mean that the output is optimal. This um, the first aim is to get language um, correct. Um, also, there will be differences between um, Sol C and and um, Solang um, uh, language. For example, on um, 
on WASM, it would be quite difficult with the current scheme to support assembly statements. Also, there are some additions, so it's like the print thing I just talked about and the different ABI encoding on uh, on different chains. Um, so a little bit about how Solang has been. When I set out to write Solang, I wanted to build a um, a traditional compiler. I didn't want it. I didn't want to do anything revolutionary. I also wanted it to be simple. Um, so there are some fairly simple stages uh, to the compiler. So the first thing the compiler always does is um, um, is is parsing. So we have um, LALR uh, grammar, um, and we have a custom lexer. And the lexer is really needed because of the pragma um, statements. Uh, so if a lexer tokenizes pragma fidelity with the simver, then um, it will produce a lot of tokens when um, it, it shouldn't. It should just take the value as everything up to the, the first semicolon. Um, so the next stage in the compiler um, is is the resolver. So the parser outputs the abstract syntax tree, and the resolver uh, well resolves all the symbols in that, um, generates all the warnings and errors, etc. Um, and in Solang, in in order of, um, in order to make it simple, um, it goes straight from the AST to a control flow uh, graph. Um, this is actually where the bulk of the code is in in the in the project. Um, this is where all the, the language support really is, and this is also a, a front end compiler because it uses LLVM. So the next part is um, there's there's also a standard library. So this is some C code which gets compiled into LLVM, LLVM IRR by Clang, and uh, this gives us a heap. So we have malloc and realloc, etc. Um, we can implement things like string compare and string concatenate. Uh, we have a Kesslock hash for changes that don't provide it. Uh, that's what we have at the moment, but this can be expanded um, to have m much more um, things you might want in a um, in a language. Um, so, in the print statement earlier, um, it would be useful to be able to um, print. Um, uh, ints or addresses or so. So string formatting would be a very useful thing, and that would be implemented in C, added to the standard library, and then um, uh, compiled into LVM IR, and then this will be linked into one big um, LVM um, code. And then using global dead code elimination, any unused um, functionality will be removed. So having a large standard library doesn't mean that the resulting wasn't um, file would be any bigger. So the last stage of the compilation is the emitter. The control flow graph generated by the resolver is um, specifically geared towards LLVM. Um, so it is mostly one to one mapping. We have to do some tricks for phi nodes. Um, we also have to generate some specific things for WASM. So because WASM doesn't support 256 bit arithmetic, we have to have some arithmetic functions. Um, we have to have an ABI encoder decoder. So we have an ABI encoder decoder for uh, Ethereum ABIs, and we have one for parity scale ABIs. Um, it also does the, so it does the linking um, in the standard, standard library, and it does have, has to do some touch-ups to the final WASM in order to make it uh, correct. Um, and there's this custom code for each particular uh, target to generate target specific um, calls to the externals, for example. Um, lastly, uh, we also need ABIs. So, um, uh, so the, the, in this directory in source ABI, uh, we have um, some, some codes to generate ABIs. Um, in Substrate, these are called metadata files. This is because in, in Substrate, um, the file contains more than just the function constructors and events. It contains names, comments, um, uh, what compiler version generated the, the, the file. Um, in the future, it may contain the hash of the of, of the WASM, so you can check the ABI against uh, the WASM, make sure it's the, the correct one. 
so um, Solang is a Hyperledger project, and um, Hyperledger have um, the mentorship program, which is a bit like Google Google Summer of Code. And through this, this year, there's a um, mentorship program for uh, Solang uh, so language server. So um, this is for uh, IDEs. So in an IDE, when you write Solidity, it can um, tell you where errors and warnings are. It can uh, do syntax highlighting, give you information about identifiers, etc. Things that make life easier when you're when you're writing um, code. So um, that's a mentorship having this year. Hopefully, be more next spring. Uh, I have to wait and see, of course. So here's some future ideas or things I would like to work on, but nothing has been done so far. So um, one of the advantages of using LLVM is that um, we can use the LLVM linker. So anything that can compile to LLVM IR um, can can be linked. So if Solidity had a foreign function interface, then um, any C code or, or Rust or whatever could be um, uh, called from Solidity and then linked in into the WASM. Uh, people want to run all sorts of crazy stuff on chain. So this would help them do that. Also, this could be helpful to add um, uh, crypto, which is written in C, to um, to smart contracts. Um, another thing is uh, we would like push and pop on, on memory arrays. Because we have a heap in our standard library and a realloc, uh, this actually, it actually isn't that hard to, uh, to implement. Uh, this is just a question of wiring things up. Um, the other thing that I've had many people ask about is um, improved data structures and solidity. So we want hash maps, linked lists, sets, trees, all, all those sorts of things, either in memory or in contract storage. And it'd be great to, to have those available. If you have those, um, if you have hash maps, et cetera, et cetera you might want generic types um, to, to use those. Um, so something like Coming in TypeScript would be great. Although this is all hypothetical, really, um, and um, I really would like to collaborate with um, uh, with the Salt C team and see what they think. I, I, I do not want necessarily want to take Solidity in its own direction um, and away from from the official Solidity. Um, just, just kind of just ideas of what would be good. Um, so the other thing with standard library could have much better um, string processing. Um, and uh, that just makes life easier for, for when you're debugging code. As Linus Torvalds said, um, all you need is, is print, printf in order to debug any problem. Um, so this would be just make life so much easier. And um, well, that's it actually. Um, yeah, so it's it's just me working on a project now. Um, there are people interested, um, but if you want to get in touch or ask any questions, uh, please do, um, and thank you very much for your time. Great, awesome, thank you, Sean. All right, um, same procedure as every talk. Uh, if you have a question in the room, please uh, do raise your hand or shout so that I know that you would like to speak. Um, and for the people on the live stream, we will give you a minute now <laughs> to think about if you have questions, then please put them in the Gitter chat. Um, we know you have it today, so we are waiting for you. Anybody here in the room has any questions with regards to the Solang Solidity compiler? Yes, Chris. Hey, thanks for your, for your talk. Um, so I agree that we should, uh, um, yeah, come together more and uh, talk about uh, potential features. The, the main problem I see is that uh, the language you're working on has uh, substrate as the main and maybe only target. And this is why your language and Solidity, yeah, sometimes have to make different trade-offs, right? Um, so I don't know, <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Um, for example, memory push and pop, Right, if you have a heap and memory is cheap, and uh, then this is certainly a good idea, but uh, as a feature facility, 
I mean, we try to not add features that uh, lure people into thinking that the operation might be cheap, but it is not in the end. So this is a certain trade-off we have to make here. I think you're muted. I just, thank you. Um, I totally agree. Um, so um, when, um, when, as and when eWASM happens, um, then um, some of these concerns might might somewhat go away um, around memory usage, etc. Um, also, um, now that the LLVM EVM backend is um, it's become quite stable, I think it's it would be quite quite interesting to add that as a target to Solang as well. Um, yeah, I would be very much interested in, in some benchmarks there for the LLVM EVM backend. Yes, 